We have a conversation starting off with the former Independent National Electoral Commission Chairman, uh, Professor Atahiru Jega. He says that Nigeria is currently a failing state rather than a failed state. Professor Jega stated that urgent action must be taken to reform the nation before the general elections in 2027 to save it, before it degenerates into a failed state, adding that the country's fundamental governance instruments have been hijacked by a pack of reckless political actors. The former INEC chairman uh, made a statement at the maiden convocation of the Bauchi State University, Gadao, while insisting that Nigeria would be considered a failed state only if it did not provide for the security, welfare, and basic needs of its citizens. He said Nigerians should push uh, to take back control of the country and stead towards more federal system as against the current unitary arrangement. Uh, to, to, to talk about this this morning, we're joined by... Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Kach Ononoju is a political analyst. He joins us from the Federal Capital Territory. Good morning, Mr. Ononoju. Thank you very much for having me. Great to have you on the program. Uh, it might be uh, safe to start by, you know, asking, you know, from your perspective, is Nigeria a failed state or is it heading towards being a failed state, like Atayu Jaga is uh, describing? The state has already failed. Uh, the government gave a postmortem of the Buhari administration and it said Buhari drove the country into uh, what he called a bankruptcy. And when you have financial failure, we've already had the failure of our security apparatus. And of course, we know very well that the organogram of state is gone. Uh, and he, what he's trying to tell you is what we've been saying since that. The state has been taken by actors, and the state capture actors, he now believes that this cannot be acceptable to be a norm. But don't also forget, he is part of the problem. Mr. Jega did an election in which can returned numbers that weren't really true, and that was what was used to remove the administration where he ran the electoral commission. So he is part and parcel of those who connived to force a failure upon the Nigerian state. So, yes, we now agree it failed. And like every human situation, we need to tell us the truth, which we're telling ourselves. And the next thing is we'll sit down to try something at redemption. That's why you've seen what he is speaking to, the government has already set purpose towards. At the Apabio colloquium, that was the main language when Mr. Agbakoba told everybody that it has failed. And for us to repair it, these are the steps for us to take. And everybody received very well Mr. Agbakoba's positions. So we are all saying the same thing. It has failed because of the instrumentation of Buhari's strategies that has now given the state into the hands of capital. So. We do not like state capture, which is where we are right now. And that's what he's saying. It has failed. It has gotten into a few individuals. And that's why I said him being an electoral umpire was also part of those who instrumented this state capture. Now that we are here and everybody is agreeing that it's been captured, it has failed, let us sit down and set purpose towards strategies for us to now recalibrate the state back to life. It is doable, it can be done, and that's what you saw the Senate President's colloquium did. It has now gotten Mr. Bakoba and other people to set tones right for how we can now calibrate actions to bring back the state. But in bringing back the state, we must understand what were those mistakes we made that drove us into this state of state capture. We don't need to repair them, and the best way for us to do is to devolve powers in those constitutional changes that Mr. Jagger is talking about. We need a devolution of powers, remove all the articles that are seen right now to be in the exclusive list, move them to the concurrent list, decentralize power. The concentration of power in Mr. Buhari's hand is the reason Buhari says he was not aware. And so cabals around him seized the state. And what did they do? They tore it apart and then raped it to the bankrupt stage that Mr. Ribadu talks about. It's enough of 
talking about fail. We know it has failed. Let's now sit down and find out the protocols that should be implemented for a better state tomorrow. And that, I believe, we should start now to discuss about the devolution of powers to the federal units. But how do we do it so that we can give it to the units that are capable, not units that are not viable? A lot of the states created are not economically viable. If we do devolution, I think the best thing we can do is to the federating sub, sub regional zones. Like you have the southeast, you have the south south, you have the northwest, you have the north central, you have the southwest. That, I believe, is the basis upon which we can give out these things and we believe they are given to hands that we think can survive. Don't devolve powers onto threatening units that are too weak to be able to survive on their own okay. economically. And that's what I'm saying. States cannot be the basis for the devolution of power. We need constitutional changes to devolve power to the, the federating sub regional zones, which is the geopolitical zones. All right. Um, I'd like us to, you know, break down further the elements that would make Nigeria a failed state, as you have uh, referred to it as. And I want to make reference to a definition given by a former president of the uh, uh, former president for peace. He, of course, is uh, Robert Rodberg, and he was the president of the World Peace Foundation. He said that a failed state is one in which the public spaces are tense, deeply conflicted, dangerous, and bitterly contested by warring factions. So insecurity is a major challenge that we have. Uh, this current administration did not invent the challenges of insecurity. They would argue that they inherited it from the past administration. Who would argue that they inherited it from the ones before them? Let's talk about the challenge of insecurity that we face as a nation. What are some of the necessary measures that we need to put in place? How did we even get here in the first place? And what are some of the necessary measures we need to put in place to get us out of the mess that we found ourselves in? Well, it's no need for us to deny we've had Boko Haram undermine the democracy, and that started when President Obasanjo took charge. Those who were not comfortable with democracy instrumented that security crisis based on religion. Now, those people, we saw most of them coming to power with President Buhari, and that's how most of them, as you're hearing from a lot of security personnel, confess they now sponsor the insecurity. The people you hear that the security officers, the generals say, are politicians respectable for the insecurity are the likes of President Buhari and those who with them gave strength to the activities of the Tabita Pulako and the Gandokoi. These are full of the militia men that came from Mali. They were responsible for the ethnic cleansings across northern Nigeria and Buhari did nothing. That's why I told you it is probably a good thing that for the 12 years that the insecurity lasted, ECOWAS couldn't do a thing. It took the military alliance between Mali, Burkina Faso, and uh, 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 Niger Republic for the Fulani militia men available on the Sahel to be stopped. How could you be doing jihad in 2023 in West Africa? And I believe President Buhari was too easy with those bandits across West Africa, and that was why they wrecked havoc in Nigeria during his reign. Now, President Tinibu has come. Tinibu has even gone further to refuse to continue funding for the unknown government sting operation in the East. And that's why this Christmas, there is a surge in traveling to the East because of the end of the unknown government, just the same way that Abacha's own hitmen stopped after the killings of people like uh, Mr. Rewane, people like uh, uh, Ab Abiola's wife, and the shooting of Ibru. All those were instrumented by the state under Abacha. So Buhari has come, he has created his own, and he has gone. Tinibu is here, Tinibu has stopped any connection to that old problem. That's why you've seen the end of unknown government, and that's why you've seen a torch and travel back to the east in the annual ritual of the Igbos called the Christmas travel back home. I believe Tinibu should continue what he has done. We recognize that the unknown government is over in the east, and we know it is because Tinibu's administration 
has refused to continue the sting operation of the Buhari administration perpetrated primarily to, uh, to provide evidence to validate Buhari's assertions that the Igbos were under terrorism. It's not true they were not under terrorism. I agree with Ms. Pitovi that the stealings of the crude was not by terrorists bring, blowing up the pipeline. No, it was by people in government stealing the Nigerian crude. So we have gone past that and we believe uh, we can start afresh to repair our country. I think Tinibu has done well not to be part of the old thing operations perpetrated by elements of the Buhari administration. Just to quickly ask, do you think that uh, now is the time for us to have conversations about state policy? Well, state police is inevitable. We already have state police. You have militias like Amoteku, that is state police. We have militias uh, everywhere, like, like uh, LASMA. LASMA is state police. We have militias like uh, the cop marshals you see. These are state police. But what we are now asking is devolve the powers to formally recognize the federation units, and in this case, I repeat, the geopolitical zones as the powers you default powers to, as you saw, Amotoku was developed by the regional powers of the geopolitical zone in the southwest. We can do this. We can devolve power to the geopolitical zones and they will be able to handle the state police. There is nothing wrong in state police. The Nigerian police force, as it is, is still controlled by governors. Every time you post a governor to a state, I mean, a, a, a CP to a state, he becomes friendly with the governor for him to be able to act properly. I think state police, this is the time for us to do it in our books, that the governors do have rights under the geopolitical zones to actually handle the state police. We cannot run away from it. Okay, well, um, you made mention of um, um, restructuring, you know, and the conversation surrounding that. Um, and I think it's one of the things that Tahir Jagai is also speaking about. And like you said, you know, he handled an independent national electoral commission um, that was also blamed for also failing Nigerians, you know, in, in his leadership recruitment process and with, um, with its elections. Um, so it's interesting to hear him, you know, now speaking. Um, but with the idea of restructuring, you know, and the, the conversations, we've had these conversations a million times. I've spoken about how it is important for Nigerians, you know, to, to, to restructure. Every administration that comes in promises restructuring of some sort, um, but nobody ever gets to doing it. Do you think Nigeria can work at, as it is currently set up um, if we simply had the different branches of government from the federal to the local government level understanding what their responsibility should be to the Nigerian citizen and to the electorate? Can Nigeria work as it, it is currently set up or it must be restructured if it is serious about working? Yes, you're very correct. Uh, Jega was part and parcel of those who conducted very bad elections that brought in the bad. Nigeria can work. Nigeria will work because Nigeria is a human creation. Even if people claim it was created for commercial purposes, the British are gone, the Portuguese are gone. We cannot sit down on our own. We have seen those arguing against any changes. Only one group amongst all your political groups only one, only one ethnicity, and that's the Fulanese who refuse for this restructuring. So I don't really think there is a lot of those who do not want us to restructure. The Bagi want us to restructure, the TV want us to restructure, the Jukun want us to restructure, the Igbos, the Yorubas, the Bini, the Ezo. People want us to restructure. It is only the Fulanese who are the only other group that didn't leave at independence. When the Portuguese left, and the English left, they stayed behind. And they don't have the numbers to keep us down. Now, we've seen in the Buhari's administration, they are the ones who conducted the violence. And that violence, all that saved Nigeria was because they did not have numbers. If they had numbers, everything Buhari wanted, seven schemes, seven fraudulent schemes, all for land. And we have today IDPs in our country living in IDP camps, whereas foreigners that are living in their villages. So that means Buhari has not, uh, Buhari's sins have not yet been corrected. Tinubu should continue to walk. The reasons why Tinubu 
has been promising people of the Middle Belt the reasons why Tinubu appointed Christopher Musa was to tell people of the Middle Belt most affected by the ethnic cleansings by the Fulani militia was that he can solve the security problem. When Tinubu became president, Nigeria's problem was 57% security concerns. And we now are asking restructure because let's not have another president like Buhari who will not do the same thing he did. I give it to you. The only way for us to have a Nigeria that is workable, as you're asking, a restructuring, and that means devolving power to the federation units. And I'm suggesting the way to devolve it to a viable federation unit is to devolve them onto the geopolitical zones, in this case, the southwest, in this case, the south-south, in this case, the southeast, the north central, yeah. the oh. northwest, and the northeast. We believe that is a strong enough economic block for you to devolve powers to, for them to be able to succeed without falling apart. You can't devolve power to a state like Zamfara. Zamfara is economically unstable. Vicarly, even security-wise, it was affected by Buhari's staged uh, security crisis that undermined Sokoto, Zamfara, and Kasena. And oh, even if you look at Kasena now, it is still not peaceful. Yeah. We need to devolve power to the federal unit. We must go that path, and I believe the government is thinking about it. That was why the senior president invited Mr. Ulis Abakoba to give that lecture about devolution of power and unbundling the very, very uh, undoable concentration of power at the federal level. Right. We have seen what it is in the very in the hand of a body like Buhari. You saw what that how it can be yeah. misused. Let us start I mean, now like to quickly on to the powers to the first units. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that would be your definition of of a restructuring. I'm sure that there's other people who have a completely different, you know, or, you know, slightly different uh, definition of what they understand as restructuring. Um, um, but I, I, I also want to know, and of course, just before I, you know, ask the next question. Uh, to uh, remind our viewers, you can be a part of the conversation. Uh, Twitter tells us this morning at New Central TV. Use the hashtag NC Breakfast Central um, and share your thoughts with us on whatever conversations we're having. We're currently speaking about Atahiri Rujaga and his uh, uh, comments towards Nigeria being a failed state or a failing state. So once again, um, tweet at New Central TV. Hashtag is NC Breakfast Central. Mr. Anonoju, it, from your perspective, how much longer do you think the country can go on existing at is, as it is currently, you know, as it currently exists? Um, Atayo Jagos says it is a failing state. So how much longer do you think we'll continue on this path, you know, you know as a failing state before we will continue, completely fail and Nigeria will no longer be seen as a viable, viable state? Do you, do you think we have another 10 years? Well, I will tell you that we've already failed. What's, hoping, what's holding us together is the fear of another implosion which could result to something similar to the bad experience of the Civil War. And you can see that uh, someone like me, I say no, no to Biafra, uh, even though, and then no, no to the actions of Ilana Omo Dua, no, no to the actions of the Boko Haram. Now, when you see Boko Haram and you see the actions of the Ilana Omo Dua and the IPOB, it's all anger from our youth. This anger from the youth tells you that we, the elders, seem to have not done well. So if you're seeing this anger from the youth coming from the Yoruba-speaking Southwest, coming from the North as Boko Haram, and then being joined by the East, and when people ask me, I said, yes, that the youth do this, it simply tells you that no motor park in Nigeria is bereft of crazy drivers. So if you see this crisis all over, don't categorize one over another. No. Don't allow those actions by the youth to define your perception about that region. It is wrong. If the youth of the North do Boko Haram, the youth of the East do IPOB, the youth of the Southwest do the Elana Omodua, it simply tells you they are frustrated about this state. The state has now failed. New Republic, in giving a post mortem about Buhari administration, said Buhari drove the country, bankrupted the country, bankrupted it. So if this country is bankrupted politically, bankrupted sociologically, because
because our social uh, strength were all challenged and you saw how the insecurity started making all of us to start hating those who were doing it. That's not the best. Thirdly, financially, we lost it. You can see what the government says about Buhari. So we have failed. Don't right. try to address it. Ask yourself, why are we not imploding? We're not imploding simply because of our experience of the last civil war. We don't want to put down violently. That's why everybody's now speaking up. Let us not allow this failure of the state to now degenerate to something that we cannot control because if Nigeria goes down, the refugees will undermine West Africa. Just mm -hmm. the same way you saw the crisis in Mali forced its own flood of dams to break and then we had insecurity from Mali affecting the entire West Africa. It was only arrested by the coup. Yes, I don't like coups and coups are not proper. But you can see that those coups were correction coups. Those coups remove those people from the Maghreb who have been undermining the life of the dark-skinned Bantu stock people. So if you check the three coups, they were all done by Bantu stock okay, people. Okay, I, I want so us to go back. Those who were trying to undermine Mr. Anandu, I like I like us to quickly go back. We're, we've run out of time, but as quickly as possible. You've made reference to us not going back to the days of the civil war. And if we if we look at, for example, a, a neighboring country or one of our, our West African countries, uh, we've seen that uh, when it comes to conversations about wars, one thing that sparks wars, apart from the political undertone, will be the division. Uh, you've talked about how we shouldn't paint the youth from the north with a general brush and assume that that's how they all behave. If we go to Rwanda, for example, the 1996 uh, uh, genocide in Rwanda, one of the outcomes of that would be that right now, you know, there's no, there's, there's, they're all Rwanda, Rwandese, right? We, you won't see that there's, they won't ask a question about, oh, are you Hutsi or are you Tutsi? In Nigeria, we're still fighting a battle that um, is shrouded in uh, religious divides, ethnic divides. Do you ever see us being able to get over this? Are we ever going to be able to get past the point of saying you're Yoruba, I'm Igbo, you're Aousa, and uh, it's, time for, it's time for someone from this tribe or this religion to become leaders? Are we ever going to get past it? We will get past it when we allow the democracy to be sincere. There is no sincere democracy in Niger. The houses are 54% of the population, but they will never allow access to power in both Niger and also in northern Nigeria. So for you to understand the crisis in the sub-region, you need to understand it that way. You also need to understand what happens in Nigeria. It's also what is driving the crisis in Mali, in Niger, in Burkina Faso, and in the Sudan. And in the Sudan, understand that it is a color issue. The Bantu stock people against the Araboid elements, that's what is being across West Africa. It is no different anywhere. Buhari and some other Tuaregs are the ones doing this. And if you look at that, if you look at the complexity of the coups, then you will understand our problems. The internal engineering crisis where Buhari's administration allowed Yorubas in Lagos to take it up against Igbos. That was purposely engineered by Buhari's government, simply to divide Nigerians further. It was like the time of the Civil War. After the end of the Civil War, the government implemented the abundant property only in River State, simply to divide the people of the East. So this was just a strategy. Even the way INEC handled the result announcement trying to divide the South between the, the Igbos against the Yorubas. All that were done by Buhari is the old divide and rule of the state. It was good that the Igbos and the Yorubas didn't take it. They left it and they allowed it. Because if they ask me, Tinibu is a win-win even for the East. Even though the Igbos did not get uh, uh, Pito be in power, I think the objectives of the Yorubas and the Igbos seem to be the same from the actions of Tinibu in regards to his treatment of those people who are responsible for the insecurity. Everybody, but the Igbos and Yoruba, wanted better and workable Nigeria. They also want a system where everything is fair. They do not want the imposition of nepotism that undermines their inclusion and participation of the affairs of the Nigerian state, which was what Buhari did. Today, his people are complaining that 
Tinubu has continued in Buhari's nepotism. Why? Because they are suddenly now at the other end of the civil game. And we should stop this. What we need to do is to allow competition based on honesty, no favoritism, no nepotism. And I bet you this is what all of us want. Our problem was simply the idea by Mr. Buhari that to use nepotism as a policy of state to not exclude thousands of other people from the activities of the state called Nigeria. Of course, he failed simply because him and his people didn't have the numbers to overrun Nigeria in eight years. So I will tell you, Nigeria will work. All we need, allow fair, fair competitive rules according to the rules of the law, and then we will go further. I All know right. what Buhari has done. He did it purposely to divide the South. He has failed. He has gone. So that is victory for us. You don't win everything you see in the market. You win some, you lose some. I think I can tell you, I, I, I happen to be with the leadership of uh, the Igbo people, and I tell you they are happy that the insecurity has gone down. That's why you've seen today the place in Nigeria with the most expensive destinations in air travel is the Southeast. They are going back home. Why? The unknown government operation is over. The Tinibu administration refused to continue funding of Buhari's staged sting operation. Right, and that, Manager. for me, is something for us to all learn from. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, these are conversations that we've had. I mean, personally, I've had it for maybe the last decade. Um, on, you know, uh, um, of course, as a journalist, um, there are conversations that will continue. Um, between now and 2027, we're going to bring them back again, you know, and talk about restructuring and whatnot. But thank you very much for the role that you play and, of course, for lending your voice each time that we reach out to you. Thanks for your time. We'll see you again. Thank you for having me. Absolutely.